chapter 20, starting from verse 1, all the way to verse 4. See, at Mighty Men of Valor, um, as you guys are turning there, I'm going to just speak. At Mighty Men of Valor, uh, what stood out to me is Ryan Kling uh, Glinski, whatever his last name is, you know. He's a powerful uh, preacher. Uh, he's a grandson of Sonny, you know, and... You know, I, I like how he preaches. You know, I like how he comes with that power. You know, there's certain individuals that walk with power that come with power from the Holy Spirit. And I like, you know, so that's why, you know, it stood out to me. It really did. So right here it says, it says, well, first off, I'd like to thank God for my salvation. You know, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my pastor. I'd like to thank my director, you know, for seeing something in me that I never sent in myself. Thank you, guys. When you go to war, your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them because the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt will be with you. When you are about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. Beggar Soris, the army. Come on. That's right. He shall say, Hear, O Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not be terrified or give away to panic before them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies and will give you the victory. Come on. Come on. Okay. I just want to start off, you know, we are, all of us are going through some storms. You know, all of us, I don't care who you are, we're all going through some storms. We could be going through some financial storms. We can go be uh, going through some health storms. Do some uh, traumatic storms, do some emotional storms, whatever it might be. Be courageous in the Lord, like yeah. Joshua one nine, when God told Joshua to be courageous and stand up for what's right. He did. Yeah. He pushed forward and he shamed the devil. Yes. We're possessing the land here, guys. We are possessing the land here. We're going to war. Yeah. Not on the east side, uh, the west side, the south side, the north side. And I'm here to tell. There is going to be 198 people in this church. Come on. God. Be confident. Be confident in the Lord, guys. Know who you are in Christ before you even take out a step in faith. Know who you are in Christ before you even start talking about Jesus. Yeah, it's going to pray to Jesus at the altar. It's going to cry out to him and to repent. That's mandatory. But once you know you who you are in Christ, you come with power. You come with dignity. You come with confidence. In Jesus' mighty name, can I get an amen? Yeah. Everybody say, this is war. This is war. It's a spiritual war. Come on, That's man. going on every day. Come on. Man. We are running out of time, my brothers and sisters. God is going to come back. God is going to come back from the east sky with legions of angels right behind him in glory. Woo. Yeah, he, he left the earth on the cross in humility, but he's coming back to earth in glory. Come on. Yeah. Power. That's something to get Jesus a hand for. Right? It's like, hey, glory, my brothers and sisters. We need to reposition ourselves. We need to reposition ourselves. We need to shift our thinking. We need to shift the way we function. We need to shift the way we talk. We need to shift the way we go out there and evangelize. There should be no reason why this church should be like this. I'm telling you right now, we should go out there and do radical evangelism. We should go out there. church guys we're on the east side one of the if not the worst town or the worst part of the city east side and we will reach them all we will reach them all sometimes we're stuck sometimes we're stuck I got about like three more minutes come on somebody sometimes we're stuck with limited thinking we're stuck in our limited thinking like thinking we're not good enough thinking like oh I can't do it Oh, this sister, this brother's better than me. No, scratch that. That's a lie. Yeah. Shame the devil. You better tell the devil who I'm coming. Uh, I'm on my way. Uh, you're calling upon me. I'm going to fulfill it. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, yeah. It's the Lord. And the power and the purpose. And the mighty God, Jesus Christ, Lord Almighty. I need a microphone like I said. The power of the Holy Spirit. We have to 
change the way we deal with our lives. Yes. You know, like, how can I say this? You know, growing up, our past, we don't live in our past no more. The only time you should look in your past is to see how far you came. Yeah. 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 How you came in the Lord. I'm here, and I declare to come a miracle right now. Yeah. I came in all burnt out. Yeah. Brother Adam, Pastor, uh, Pastor Joe, and, and Brother Lewis. The four ministers right there in the front. That's no coincidence. That's no coincidence. I think not. Come on, Pastor. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I think not. Yeah. God had a plan in a preference for me. Yeah. I pulled up in a 2014 Mazda. I had drugs in the middle. I had money in the middle. I said, I don't need that. God has a calling upon my life. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. for me. Yeah. My children. Come on, somebody. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Don't freestyle no notes. The power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you guys right now. Everybody has the power of the Holy Spirit. This church is anointed. This church is anointed. I'm to tell you right now. This church is here for no reason. Yeah, this church, by the end of this summer, will be filled up with 198 people. But the people need to reach that God you there to reach them.